they would slide out the side entrance as she was locking up the main gate. Maggie was letting the cows in, and as she went on ahead, uh, I slipped out the other side, she went that side of the cows, and I slipped out that side, and I went into the street and got away and went straight to my friend's house. And just as I was on top of the street going into my friend's house, the bell started ringing. The nuns didn't like it when anyone escaped, and then all hell would break loose and all the bells would go off, and we'd be all delighted because we knew somebody had got out once them bells started ringing. The nuns would be scurrying round, really scurrying from one place to the other. I said, let me come in quickly, let me come in quickly. The police will be here in a minute. Where were you, where were you? What is it, what is it? Were you in prison? I said, no, 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 I was in that madhouse up the road. So she said, oh, come in, come in, come in. She said, what's it all, what's it all about, what's it all about? And I said, I had a baby, and they put me in there. My parents, father and mother put me in there. All I could think about was my child, and I found out that he was uh, fostered out. But I, I couldn't stay around because I was afraid that, that, that if they caught up with me, I'd go back again. And if my parents found out where I was, they would uh, send for me. Christina made her way to Northern Ireland to work as a nurse. She had spent three years in the Magdalen Asylum before her escape. Some of the penitents' defiance of the nuns hardened as they grew up. I started to rebel. I thought, I'm 21, 22 years of age. I'm going to be here forever more. You know, I want out. So I wouldn't do my work. They used to lock the dormitories. So while the girl had gone down the clock, I lay under the bed so she didn't spot me. And when the door was locked, I lay on top of my bed. I miss mass, I miss my dinner, I miss my breakfast, I miss my tea. And I'd let my hair grow, and it was way down my back. It was really nice, thick, shiny black hair. And the sister come along, get that hair cut, she said. This lady's going to cut it for you. And she had the lady beside her with shears to cut my hair. So I really kicked up a stink. I punched the door. I did lose my temper, but I was determined she wasn't going to cut my hair. And I won. She didn't cut my hair. She left me alone. In 1964, after eight years' incarceration at the Sisters of Mercy Asylum in Galway, Phyllis was released. Some of the penitents were eventually tracked down by sympathetic relatives. In 1945, after spending four years in a Magdalen asylum, Martha Cooney was rescued by her cousin, Jim. On the day of my release, it was a wonderful, exhilarating feeling, I suppose you'd call it. And in the afternoon, Jim came for me and took me out, and I was free. Adapting to life outside, though, was an awesome challenge. I was wondering if I'd be able to make it on my own. And you see, not having seen many people, only the, the usual, not having seen people dressed up, I mean, the, the clothes and every, everything, everything was different. The spaces and the come and go as you please and whatever. It was wonderful. When I left the Magdalen Laundry, I went to Dublin, and I felt very self-conscious. I thought people knew who I was and what I'd done. I was supposed to be a real bad person in this Magdalen Laundry, and I was frightened to talk to anyone. I was forever looking over my shoulder. And if somebody looked at you in the street, you yourself felt that they were looking at you because you were bad. They didn't know who you were, they didn't know anything about you, but this was how you felt inside.
In 1956, Bridget Young left the orphanage in Limerick. She had avoided the experience of the laundry, but the emotional scars of torture and sexual abuse still affected her ten years later when she married. It did have an effect, a terrible effect, because then, if it had never had a good man, whatever, you can't really... fall into that marriage and feel that you're happy with that marriage because at the back of your mind you don't want to know you know it's something that I think because of the way it was done I just didn't want to know anything about it you know your sex life doesn't last. You just don't want it. haunts you. All I wanted to do was do a job and be independent. But I have never wanted to marry or make a commitment to anybody. Because I never wanted anybody to have power over me or chain me ever again. I met my husband when I was 25. He was quite a nice man. We got on very well. But I didn't like the sexual part of the marriage. I didn't like it at all. I felt it was wrong. He was very patient for a long, long time. He was very, very patient. And that, but eventually, we broke up. I felt ashamed. Every time he touched me, I thought it was wrong. The nuns had told us it was wrong to let a man touch you. They never prepared us for the outside world. I was really wrong of them, you know. But I wanted to have children. And I did have children from my husband, beautiful children. Christina Mulcahy also married and had children, but she was haunted by the memory of her first baby boy, whom she kept secret for over 50 years. I've lost shame and respect and pride and everything that went with it. Anybody, any girl that has a baby out of wedlock is, is, is a fallen person and they have no luck. They, they fall, they, they lose their respect. And I didn't tell my family, I didn't tell anybody till I told them six months ago. That was it. But I had suffered badly through it all. With the help of her family, Christina was finally reunited with her son. She died in February 1997. In 1996, the last of the Magdalen institutions closed. It is still not known exactly how many penitents worked and prayed behind their walls. The church has kept the record secret. But it's estimated that as many as 30,000 women passed through the asylums during this century. Of the many legacies of the Magdalen experience, one that clearly remains is a lasting hostility to the church. I didn't see anything godly in that church. I didn't see anything Christly. All I saw was a bunch of bullies. That was all I... A bunch of bullies and devils dressed up in nuns' habits. That's the way I looked on it. I 
I feel nothing about the Catholic Church. The day I left the Catholic Church, I left that with them. Nuns weren't supposed to be cruel. They were sisters of mercy. They didn't show us any mercy. They weren't supposed to do what they'd done. So I always said if there was a just God in heaven, we wouldn't have suffered like that. That was how I put it when I came out. I don't go to church. I don't pray. I don't force religion down my children's throats. I never have done. 